So when I do classes, we do a lot of raw spice tasting and these are what I call spice shots when you basically just taste a masala. So you deconstruct a masala or a spice blend um, by putting out every spice that you're gonna use in it and then you taste those spices raw, one by one after the other, to get the end effect of the dish. Okay. Now, it's a really good learning tool to know how to do this because if you've got a recipe and it's listed the spices out for you, you can actually start to teach yourself how to taste by laying out those ingredients raw and tasting them through. Because the end effect of that mouthfeel will give you an indication of the end effect of the dish. Because spices are emotive. They're not just about flavor, they're about donating a feeling to you when you eat and, and what that feeling kind of contains. Is it sunshine, is it darkness, is it complexity, is it ease, all of those things. So what I've done here is we've made paneer today for one of the recipes which will be in this description but I've kept out all of the spices that have been used in that paneer and I'm going to get you with me to try all the spices and then we're going to try the paneer and you're going to tell me how that correlates, okay? Okay. All right. So the way that we do it is um, um, we're just going to reach in and take a pinch out of every one and I'm going to tell you what you're tasting so that you can tune to that, mm -hmm. all right? So you can do this at home. So it's a really good practice if you're wanting to learn more about um, how to combine, um, why you use certain spices in what dishes, tasting them raw, lay out the recipe as it says and taste them one after the other and you'll get an indication of how it makes you feel, um, how it interacts with the palate and then how it makes you feel physically, bodily. Okay, so we're gonna start with the fine white soul. Go. So. It's salty. So yep. So, so it's straight line salty. So it's very blunt salt, like it's staccato salt. Just dum dum dum. Yep. There's nothing pretty about it. Go fine pink salt. A whole different experience of sodium. Like it's milder and prettier and rounder. Mm. And suddenly some of that intensity of the white salt is diminished by putting the pink salt on top. Yep. Yes. Yep. Get it? Turmeric. Enough that you can taste. So the salt drives the bitterness in the turmeric, but still gingery, mm. but it's oily. It feels a little bit like clay on the tongue. Clay, yeah. Clay, yep. So that sort of weighty sensation. Okay. Uh, Kashmiri chili. Not too hot, so you'll be fine. Brightens up that sensation of clay and weight that turmeric donates. Yeah, mm. yeah, right, makes it kind of sweet and acidic a little mm. bit. Mm -hmm. Ground fennel, fennel powder. Oh, yum, so sweet. Licorice. <laughs> 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 so the chilli brings out the sweetness in the, in the fennel powder as well, so just straight licorice. Ginger powder. With the fennel, it makes it like gingerbread. So it's got that very gingerbready, or um, um, you know those ginger lollies, like um, ginger chunks. Oh yeah, yeah. It tastes like that. More like that. Yeah, yeah candy ginger kind yeah. of. Yeah, that candy ginger taste. Um, this is arm chua, which is acidity, so green mango, and that tastes a yummy lemony sherbet. sherbet. Mm. So it's almost a texture as well. This is mace powder. Next. Leather. It's like licking a saddle. Have you ever licked a saddle? Well, no. But, <laughs> but you can kind of get it. Yeah. yeah so it, it darkens the mouth. So whereas it was all sherbet and light and licorice, now there's like a darker tone and a more dense feel to the mouth. Do you get that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So cumin seed. Oh, the mace makes it like eucalyptus. It tastes like tiger balm. Mm. Got that. Yep. Mm -hmm. So um, normally that's quite soil-like, but it's freshening your mouth. So after all that density and warmth, you're getting this kind of fresh feeling. Mm -hmm. Coriander powder. Reduces the mint eucalypt capacity and sort of gives it like this soil back note. So it gets actually a bit more pleasant. It, it creates a milder sensation. 
Yeah, it's kind of a, a waxy feeling on the back of my tongue. Yeah. yeah. So it has that quality. It's, it actually has a, a very um, important textural impact. Garam masala. Flattens the flavour further. Yeah. Becomes quite heavy and mm. warm and not as strong as clove, but you're getting the vibe of clove and nutmeg in there. Yeah, yeah, nutmeg. Mm. Jaggery sugar. This is like a chunk. Mmm. All right, so yummy. Just brightens everything up. It's like mm. yummy, sweet, but all the spice is still there in the back. My mouth's full, my face is full, but now there's pleasure, like pure pleasure. Yeah. And a little piece of fresh tomato. And that just creates like a, a cooling, kind of expansive um, brightness. And if you wait, because it cancels out the immediate intensity of the spice, but if you wait, feel it come back. And how it comes back is as a structural feeling, more than a single taste. Now what it feels is full, or um, it's hard to define a single flavour character. Yeah, it's uh, it's a sensation like around the whole inside of your mm. mouth. So it's like all of the points of your mouth. It's painted the walls and the ceiling and the floor. Yeah, yeah that's a really good articulation. Um, so I'm just going to put a bit of garam masala through this to finish. That's everything that's in here, other than, you know, the produce. But what I want you to do, that's a clean spoon, is taste this now. And tell me if this sensation is replicated by that sensation. You have to tell me, because I will say yes, obviously. <laughs> oh my God. Get everything. Well, yeah. Isn't it? Mm. So, talk me through it. It's um. I mean, I I don't know. Maybe I was, maybe I should have cleansed my palate. No, don't do that. No. no, you're all good. Because mm. it's it's like an exact replica, basically, of what we just went through. Now we have like liquid and texture and yeah and uh, yeah fun in a pan. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's so the the replication, so the emotive feeling that you're left with and the actual structural feeling of the mouth after experiencing all of this is that. Yeah. So the ability to pre-taste your dish is in here. Mm. These are the whole spices. Now we can't taste these. They have a structural impact in here that we can't access, you know, by trying. But, um, but the general impact, even that coolness, the way the way and the paneer cools the palate, the way the tomato does at the end, but it yeah. still all comes back around it. Yeah, no, I totally see what you're saying now. It's like, to run through that process, you're just like, that's what it's going to taste like. Yeah. And the sensation and, and the emotion, like you said too. So yeah. basically the benefit of doing that is, one, you can try it on recipes that you're trying, but two, if you want to create your own spice blend and you're not sure exactly if the flavours are going to work together, you can taste it before you make it. And I guess the experience of uh, the order in which you taste comes with experience? Yeah, a little bit. That's a bit like, that's a bit I can't kind of, you know. Yeah. But yeah. obviously, um, I'm, yeah, I'm placing them in a way, but any way you place them, the end experience will be the same. What might change is the emotive content throughout the experience. Yeah. So there is a little bit of an art form in that, but that's why following a recipe is useful because recipes are generally written out in the way that flavour progresses throughout the dish. Right. Um, you, you write the recipe as you're putting the ingredient in and the way that you put ingredient in forms the basis of flavour structure. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for that experience. Thanks for helping. <laughs>